Hello and welcome to another episode of SHC Badgers Basketball. A new chapter unfolds. I'm Sanaya Anje, reporting from Spring Hill College. In today's episode, we will be embarking upon the men's team and all of what they had to endure during this past season, during the coronavirus pandemic. It's truly amazing to say that these players were able to overcome all obstacles and work on their mental toughness in order to endure this season. Here's what they had to say. My name is Sam Davidson. I'm from Australia. You said that you missed home. When's the last time you've been home? I believe the last time I was home was in August, so this is the longest time I've been away from home before in my life. And basketball over here in America is uh, completely different, like there's more practice, there's more trainings, uh, coaches are, are fully dedicated. Not saying that they're not dedicated back home, but uh, like you really, like back home is more of a fundamental kind of game, whereas in here it's, a, it's very kind of more ISO and kind of you play, you come across a lot of athletic and taller people, that's for sure. So coming over here was a bit of a, a, bit of a shock my first year where I was, I was once a uh, kind of taller member in my team, but now I'm, I'm looked at as, as one of the shorter members. So that was a big change and learning to, to kind of mold my game around the, well, around the American style, but also keep my, my fundamentals and stuff I had learned from Australia. So that was a big challenge for me coming over here, yeah. Being a part of a, a short season was was interesting. It was full on. It was there was really no time to kind of stop and and take a break. So it was really it was a big te wear and tear on 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 especially my body, especially being my first year in college, playing against older guys and and more athletic guys. I was I really had to kind of push through and really keep myself together and keep my body right and make sure I'm maintaining myself to be able to keep playing and stay healthy, which I was able to do this year, which I was really thankful for. Um, but yeah, it was really um, mentally towards the end of the season, I, I, I got kind of tough on, tough on myself, I think, because we played like 11 games in the space of like a month, which is really quick turnarounds, back to backs, uh, traveling, and you really had to be mentally ready and aware and make sure you're looking after yourself to be able to play the next game. So yeah, it was, it was a challenge, it was a challenge, but one that I, it was an experience to be able to, definitely won't forget this year, so that's for sure. Being a smaller campus, you're able to really make that connection with, not even away from basketball as well, you're able to make friends and, and I, I call them like my family now, um, especially, especially the boys on the team. We, sadly, we weren't allowed to hang around each other a lot because of COVID again but we still saw each other pretty much every day, had dinner and, and lunch and stuff together and, and hung out enough. So it was good, it's good. I see them, I see that everyone really has my family here, yeah. Corona definitely affected that. If that wasn't, if it wasn't in a pandemic, we probably would have spent a little bit more time with each other with team dinners or meals and stuff like that, which would have been fun. But sadly it wasn't, so we were able to get uh, a few more things away, but away from basketball, uh, so like mates and stuff, we are still able to, to hang out and stuff, but I was kind of mainly restricted to my dorm, I guess. So maybe I wasn't able to meet as many people as I wanted to around campus, but it, it is what it is and you kind of learn to live with it. And I've still met some really nice people around here and, and I'm still good mates with my teammates. So I've had a great first year and first, first season at Spring Hill and I'm, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to come halfway across the world to play the sport I love and and be around some new people, some new experiences and, and in a whole new country that I think not many people really get this opportunity and chance to, to have this go. So I'm really giving it my all and hoping to get something, get what I want out of it. My name is David Daniels. I am from Chicago, Illinois. It's a different culture from black at home. So I'm getting used to it, it's really nice. I always wanted to be a college athlete. Uh, what drove me to Spring Hill was probably just being able to do basketball and track together. A lot of the uh, schools don't offer that for some athletes. So that was like really what drove me and I wanted to get away from home and be in warmer weather. I felt like my playing has been, it hasn't changed, but it has affected the culture of the school and just the team as an aspect because a lot of people, they thrive off fans being in the stands, thrive off that energy and that does help a lot. But 
it, I felt like it also drove our team to be closer together because we had to build our energy off of each other. So that helped us with the team culture, but it's most definitely a shock, <laughs> as you can say. It's most definitely a shock and it's very different from not having my family and friends up in the stands because my parents, they like never missed the game. So it was really hard and difficult for them, but got to adapt. What brings me to like keep pushing and for like just to be here is the love, honestly. Like I fell in love with it at a young age. When you fall in love with something at a young age and you repeatedly do it, it becomes part of your lifestyle. It becomes like a part of me. Like I don't know where I'll be without basketball. I honestly don't know where I'll be without basketball. Like we, the team even talks about like if basketball wasn't here, we don't know what we'd be doing. <laughs> we don't know what we'd be doing. But um, just the love for it, the lifestyle, the want to just be there for my team and be there to be a better athlete on the basketball court. It's pushed me to do what I have to, mm -hmm. to be the best, to be what I have to be for the team and for myself to keep winning games, really. I will tell the fans and community Please keep supporting us. Keep please keep being there for us, watching our streams, everything. And as soon as they're allowed fans and be bring everybody. <laughs> bring the energy, bring anything you can, cause we work so hard. We work so hard for just to keep playing and we love the support. We really do. We appreciate it. My name is Christian Brandt. I am from Auburn, Alabama. I'm dependable, but this year I didn't really feel that way with uh, my performance. Um, I don't know, it's just something about junior year just throw me off. I had a bad junior year in high school. Um, I think luckily it's like a little bittersweet with COVID because like, you, like everybody says, we want to play, we want to have a conference championship, we want to compete for championships. But with such a bad year that I was having, it being cut short, it's kind of nice to be able to not have to worry about games and get back in the gym with my guys and the coaches and really fix out all the problems so that we can get ready for next year's championship. This year has been hard for everyone and so you would say that the COVID might have impacted your playing? Like in what manner? Do you think you just, your mind wasn't all the way in it or do you think that not being able to hit the gyms due to like restrictions maybe played a factor? I think it was the uncertainty and the motivation to play. Um, balancing being a normal student and being a student athlete is something um, intoxicating about being a normal student. The free time, the ability to be able to have good grades because of um, a lot of time being able to be in the classroom and focus on my homework and not have the stress of having to finish this assignment after practice. I mean, I know what it takes to be a student athlete and I'm all for that so that um, it doesn't bother me. But when you get a taste of what the grass on the other side, it's kind of hard to go back and just really it was, it was hard to have the motivation to perform and play when so many people were telling us that we weren't going to play. You had our coaches telling us to get ready for the season, but everybody else was just counting us out. So at some point, the first month, it was easy to stay in the gym, to practice, to get with the guys. But when gym keeps on getting closed, they keep on telling you to get out of the gym because of COVID. And just basically everybody just saying, season's not going to happen. You kind of start believing it at some point. And then next thing you know, like, for example, we had our season, we were supposed to start January 15th. Then they're like, no, we're pushing it back. And then they're like, all right, we're starting February 1st. And they're like, no, we're pushing it back. And so you're like, high hopes, high hopes, high hopes. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, they're like, all right, we're playing this week. And you're like, well, y'all been saying we haven't been able to play. So it was definitely, and you can see it in college sports is that the teams that have experience with seniors perform well. And a young team that's never been in a college scenario struggle. And I think that's what we had to deal with this year. I mean, being the oldest guy as a junior, it's, 
it's something different, especially we started in the fall with three seniors. So those three seniors were our team leaders. Those were our guys that took charge. Everybody listened to them. And then when your three leaders leave and you have this vacuum hole and you just try to step in right in the middle of the year, it's kind of hard to really buy into something that was just completely turned on his head halfway through the year. Having the title of a senior holds a lot more weight than people give credit for it. It holds a lot of weight just having experience of being a college student, being older, being 22, 23, 24 years old. It holds a lot of weight in the people's uh, decisions and minds. I knew I wanted to be a coach. Um, I didn't know teacher was gonna be that path. So my whole family as teachers, my mom, my dad, three out of my four grandparents, my aunts and uncles, everybody's teachers. Um, at first I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach because I was really big into weightlifting. However, uh, classes and how hard college science is, um, I decided the second route was teaching and um, recently just being in the schools and being able to teach kids um, it's made me realize that there was a reason why I didn't work out to be a strength and conditioning coach, that my purpose on this earth is to teach and coach and help kids out um, and be a father figure to those who don't have a father figure. The ability to um, critically think and be able to be their own voice, I think that that's what's going to help our next generation for America to really move past a lot of the stuff that's happening and to really grow. And it starts with our education system. And I think a lot of people overlook that, is that a lot of the problems we see start in elementary and middle schools and people want to look at the results without looking at what starts the problem. And so I think by, if every student in high school, middle school, elementary school had that one person that loved them, that really cared about them, I think that this world would be a lot better. I completely agree with you, Christian. Join me in the last episode to hear from the community that greatly misses being able to participate in sporting events here on campus. Thank you for tuning in to SHC Badgers Basketball, A New Chapter Unfolds. Your reporter, Sanaya Andre, signing off.